My working title for the Discourse and Reflection essay will be Do Postmodern Children's Books Help or Hinder the Promotion of Literacy to Children from Disadvantaged Backgrounds? I will now explain the issues that this essay title or question present. Firstly, postmodern picture books. I will look at a cross-section of postmodern picture books, which I will identify later, analysing them according to a selected list of criteria for postmodernism. There are many such lists of criteria that I've come across in my reading, but at the moment I'm favouring Robin McCallum's list from Would I Lie to You? Modal Disruption in Some True Fairy Tales. McCallum lists four characteristically postmodern strategies, overt intertextuality, inversion of the narrative voice, disruptions to the diegetic level of narration, and modal contrasts and disruptions within the pictorial discourse. I think these characteristics will give me the scope and a springboard to explore the chosen picture books thoroughly. I will investigate how each of the chosen titles adhere to these postmodern criteria, discussing how they are similar and different in their approach. Some, for example, are likely to rely heavily on intertextuality, while it might be disruptions within the pictorial discourse that give others their postmodern edge. The next issue that my question presents is the promotion of literacy. I want to look at what is meant by literacy. There is, of course, a lot written about this in publications exploring education. I will explore a little bit about the relationship between decoding and phonics versus decoding images, understanding a story, and developing a love and passion for reading. Research, for example, has shown reading for pleasure to be the single most important factor in determining the academic success of a child. Can books themselves promote reading? For this investigation, I've chosen books that some educators claim do just that. These images and screen grabs from teachers' websites, shown on this slide, for example, claim that these types of books help reluctant readers and inspire children to read further. But is this always true? To answer that, I will look at material regarding disadvantaged children and postmodern picture books. I will look at how the relationship between children from disadvantaged backgrounds and postmodern books is different from that of more privileged children. To do that, I will need to explore what I mean by disadvantaged backgrounds. Many of the academic texts I've been looking at use examples of apparently affluent children who get these postmodern stories and images. But what is it about a child's background that disadvantages them in this area? One of the most useful texts here will be Family, Scholarly, Culture and Educational Success, Books and Schooling in 27 Nations which brings research showing that it is the number of books the child has regular access to that makes the biggest difference, not necessarily the child's economic background or the professions of their parents. Why is this? In this essay, I will argue that having access to lots of books builds the child's cultural capital, that is, the knowledge that they bring to a text. I will look at some education theorists who show that it is the knowledge someone brings to a text that enables their full understanding. In the context of this investigation, this could be applied to the different levels of knowledge about traditional fairy tales a child brings to a postmodern picture book, for example. How does this impact the relationship between postmodern children's books and the child's understanding and appreciation of the story? Could the child have gained knowledge from elsewhere, such as other forms of popular culture, like movies, TV or video games? Many children only know the characters from Shrek and other films like that, but does this help or does it blur the lines still further? I have narrowed down these texts to look at in my essay. I'll probably pick three or four of these to concentrate on, making sure that each one presents different aspects of postmodernism. 
Which of these require prior knowledge from the reader in order to gain from the intertextuality involved? And which might be more accessible to a reader who does not bring this knowledge with them? Wolves by Emily Gravett, for example, requires the reader to be familiar with the conventions associated with public libraries. Likewise, Nibbles the Book Monster may require prior knowledge of fairy tale characters in order to fully appreciate its postmodern plot. It could be argued that I do not like books anymore and The Incredible Book-Eating Boy work as tales in themselves, albeit with many postmodern elements. The key sources and materials I will use for the essay will fall into these three broad categories listed here on this slide. I've already referred to examples from each of these in this presentation, and you can find out more detail in the bibliography. Finally, what structure will my essay take? Firstly, I plan to analyse the chosen picture books. What makes them postmodern? After that, I'll look at how these picture books attempt to promote literacy to their audience. Next, what do we mean by children from disadvantaged backgrounds? And then I'll move on to look at how does a lack of books impact their cultural capital and the knowledge that they bring to a text. Finally, I will look at how this might impact on their understanding and appreciation of the chosen books before drawing my conclusions. In conclusion here, I believe that this essay will allow me to develop my own argument, a critical perspective on the issue of literacy, postmodern children's books, and how these can be accessed by children from diverse backgrounds, all through the prism of education. Thank you.